talked about that. Oh, Ja Rule's not guilty. You found about that? Ja Rule is innocent. Innocent of all these crimes. And if you're wondering what crime is he innocent of, being a doofus, really. Yeah, being a bit of a doofus. Um, if you're familiar with the whole fire Festival controversy that happened a couple of years ago, I'm pretty sure, right? Or was it last year? Anyway, happened a couple of years ago. Um, loads of stuff's been written about it. You know it was a complete catastrophe. It, t- it, t- it started being, I think it went from being a festival, it went from being like a retreat from influencers and turned into some sort of festival thing with influencers and public figures flying to this uh, island. Um, and then obviously guests would then fly in. They'll buy these amazing condos and tents and stuff. And that didn't work out. Great catering didn't work out. It was a bit of a calamity. And everyone lost out on it. The local community, the people that went there were stranded and influencers were stifled out of cash. You know, loads of people were, were stifled out of it. And in the end, the main um, architect, architect behind the whole issue, Billy McFarlane, was convicted and charged. And now he's sitting in prison. But I'm pretty sure he's secured a, the rights to his book or he's writing his memoir now at the moment. So, you know, things are still looking up for him because I'm sure when he comes out, he'll get inundated with offers to appear on celebrity big brother do loads of guest appearances and all that sort of stuff he's able to reform himself and if he's a serial entrepreneur which it does look like he is he'll be fine but one person that was also came into a lot of stick who didn't actually get punished as much as they thought we thought he would do especially considering he was painted in a documentary was ja rule now ja rule wasn't from what i saw looking at from what i remember watching the documentaries the, the hulu and the netflix one it didn't seem as if he was complicit in the fraud but he did seem gleefully unaware or gleefully misinformed and he didn't really seem that curious about understanding where exactly the money was coming from how they were going to fulfill their promises um and just in generally just being part of the overall thing he just wanted to be the front you know have his top off drink loads of beers and just kind of you know all the models around and just kind of be the the fun guy around there, the kind of celebrity stamp that kind of pushed the thing forward and obviously that didn't work out but it kind of seemed as if like throughout the whole process he was such a doofus throughout he was so unaware and he was such a he was so he was so eager to make sure this worked so he could maybe use it as a springboard to kind of um, launch the second phase of his career maybe he's kind of seen himself not much as a recording artist anymore and he kind of wants to move into other lanes which is more than which is more than you know um, open to doing so I think the desperation to kind of paint himself as an entrepreneur, to kind of position himself as an entrepreneur, as a business person, led him to kind of act really, really, really dorky on camera. Like he came across really cringy. I think Billy McFarlane obviously did as well, but I think we're more familiar with seeing a Billy McFarlane figure. If you've ever watched, worked in a startup or you've watched Silicon Valley, you know the Billy McFarlane's exist all over the place. So it's not much of a surprise that way. But the way Ja Rule acted and how he was conducting himself was really, really painful to watch. But it seems as if the court has judged that he wasn't guilty and he's got nothing to... I think the, the case hanging over his head at the moment was the issue maybe with some of the catering or some of the money people lost out on. They were true trying to... Basically, I think no one's been paid back or owed the monies that they've got from the whole debacle. But somehow the court has completely um, ruled that, that Ja Rule has nothing to... No blame associated with his name whatsoever. So he's completely in the clear. And I think off the back of that, he's also going to launch his new app, something called Icon, which is basically the same sort of thing about, you know, connecting with influence. So this is article from Metro that basically speaks in a bit more. Let's quickly read through it. The title says, Ja Rule off- officially cleared of wrongdoing in the 100 million Fire Festival lawsuit. Here, there's Ja Rule there with Billy McFarland. Um, ja Rule has been cleared of wrongdoing in a major Fire Festival lawsuit two and a half years after the ill-fated festival. The 43-year-old 43, 43 rapper has officially been dismissed from a $100 million civil lawsuit filed over the infamous festival, which was discovered to be a scam as artists cancelled and revelers' luxury accommodation never materialised. Attendees represented by attorney Mark Gagaros filed a class action suit against Fire Festival Billy McFarland, who's currently in jail, and other executives with co-founder Ja Rule also named. The the always on time rapper was dropped from the legal action in July 2019 with lawyers attempted to re-add Jarrell's name, Jeffrey Bruce Atkins, to the class last, last to the class law action suit amid allegation he had advanced knowledge the festival was going to be a disaster. So that's where I think I agree. I think if you watch the documentary again, documentaries are hard to kind of um, ascertain any kind of truth. I think we've seen it with the Michael Jackson documentary. It's hard to kind of believe anything in there because essentially it is a filmmaking process there are they are trying to uh, propagate or push forward the narrative you know everyone's got their reasons for making them they're not necessarily uh, a platform for laying down the facts and let leaving the, the viewer to make their own mind up the best documentaries really try to make your mind up for you on a topic look at all the vegan documentaries out there that 
have meat eaters, you know, flipping out, usually because they're trying to push a particular message. They're not necessarily just trying to lay down the framework of saying this is why this diet is uh, better for these people. It's about this is why this diet is better than that diet. That diet is nothing. You should go here. Those guys don't know what they're talking about. And then it turns into a war and no one really listens to each other. So the whole Jaru if you look at the documentary, you can definitely tell he was gleefully unaware. He was um, painfully uninformed. He didn't, he doesn't strike me as the brightest guy in the world. That's no insult to him. And I'm sure he wouldn't see as an insult. He probably, when you have the level of celebrity he is, um, it's probably be better use of your time and resources to employ really smart people around you to advise you on the right thing to do. And then, of course, you being the artist, you being the public figure, you can then have the ability to maybe do a bit of a gut check, maybe, you know, lend your, you know, lean on your experience in the industry to kind of then add some more weight to your decision making process. But you don't need to be the you don't need to be the de facto go to person and have all the knowledge, you know. Why why would you do that? Especially nowadays when you can get people to help you out. But if you watch it, he just was not un he was just unaware and didn't see the writing was on the wall. He believed anything Billy McFarlane was spitting out there, which is partly why Billy McFarlane was able to raise so much money for the festival in the first place, because he was a convincing, charming, um, charismatic, um, you know, passionate dude. So you could understand why, you know, if Billy McFarlane could convince a room full of hard-nosed veteran investors to, you know, um, sign a check and give him some money, I don't think Ja Rule was that difficult of a mark. You know, it was pretty easy to do. So I, I don't blame the court to kind of looking at it and thinking, you know what, this guy might be a bit dumb, he might be a bit unaware, but he definitely wasn't, didn't have advanced knowledge, right, <laughs> of it. Oh, yeah, this is a legendary dude here, um, Andy King. You guys are familiar with him, you know? He's a ride-or-die guy. But anyway, it continues. Uh, however, Judge P. Kevin Castle um, has said uh, that Judge P. Kevin Castle has sided with Ja Rule and dropped him from the civil lawsuit. Judge Castle said the court rejected plaintiff's con con consolary assertion um that they railed on the defendant's uh representation about the five festival as insufficient to state a claim for fraud in the case of atkins plaintiffs alleged that an actionable false statement but failed to allege that they acted in reliance thereof J jarrell's lawyer ryan haywood hayden smith um why have why has everyone got three names here told all hip-hop this ruling is nothing short of total vindication for atkins Jaru had teamed up with Billy McFarlane on Fire Festival to promote Fire Festival booking app with celebs including Bella Hadid and Kendall Jenner promoting the festival. Are they still tied to a civil lawsuit then? Because I'm pretty sure they, they associated Jaru, sorry, Kendall and Kylie. I mean, Kylie and uh, Bella. Are they still involved? I'm wondering what's happening there. Um, the, 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 however, all the, all the acts pulled out. People who arrived in the Bahamas were greeted by disaster relief tents to stay in, and the cuisine promised turned out to be cheese sandwiches in styrofoam containers. While Jaru is in a clear, McFarland is serving six years in prison for multiple counts of fraud, including the failed 2017 festival. The entire fire festival disaster is detailed in two documentaries. We know that, we know that, we know that. So, yeah, um, he's pointing out another, another app too called Icon. I'm pretty sure he told them um, another, um, there's a famous picture of the container with food. Which is interesting, right? I guess if you've been fully vindicated and you want to make another move in the startup industry, you'll do it. But there is, um, and usually the startup industry is quite, we are, they're quite favorable to people who are able to execute an idea, it fail and then come back again. All your favorite founders out there have many, have a whole bevy of startups they started before the one that took off. So um, maybe that could be his fight. He fights could be, you know, his early app that he did that didn't work out. But I don't know, the way he got painted in, in this, the way he got painted in the documentary, the way people reacted to him on social media, the damage might be irrevocable, especially if Jaro is going to be the kind of um, front person for most of these apps, which I'm pretty sure he will be. If he does launch another app similar to the one he did for Fire, I'm pretty sure he's doing one, right? Let me just quickly check it. I'm pretty sure Jaro is doing like another app similar to Fire. I think it's called Icon or something. Jaro Icon. I'm pretty sure he's doing something like that. Is it Icon? Yeah, see, he is doing another one. So here's Jaro talking about Forbes, right? With his doc, let's quickly watch, see what it's say here. Here's Jaro at Forbes talking about his new app called Icon. I haven't watched this, I don't know what it's going to talk about, but let's see what he's got to say for himself. I think the thing that drives me nuts right now, the main thing that drives me nuts, is people thinking or, or, or feeling like, I would ever be a part of a, like conning somebody or, or, or fraud. Like those words are really, really like, fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because 
it's like I would, I just wish everyone could know me personally. Like, so then they would know, like, Ja, that's not Ja, he can never do that. You know what I'm saying? He would just, that's not his character. But, you know, that's just not the case. And, you know, I get it all day. People, you know, they call my wife the fraudster. Yeah, you got, got a fraud couple. You, got a, <laughs> you know, I laugh about it, but it really is like, it really, it really is one of those words like, like rapist or, you know, those bad things that people put, like, I, that's one of those things I don't ever want to be attached This to. is the problem that he has, Jaro. He doesn't seem remorseful, I guess because he generally hasn't done anything wrong. He generally got pulled, he generally got scammed. It's essentially like, imagine if you were working for Bernie Madoff and he kind of um, enlisted you to be one of his sales reps for his Ponzi scheme that, you know, frauded billions of dollars out of, you know, people's pensions and you know, effectively ruined people's lives, drove a couple of his, I think one of his sons to uh, suicide and broke up his family. Just, you know, he left a trail of bodies and broken families all over the place, right? So if you're one of the sales guys or you're one of the brokers that worked at, you know, Bernie Madoff's um, investment company, whatever it was that he was doing, and then Bernie Madoff goes down and you and the, and the victims file a class civil action lawsuit against Bernie Madoff and everybody that works in the company, you would be, a little bit angry and annoyed if everyone tried to come after you to pay the money back as if like you had any kind of insight into it because you know the fraud was occurring up above it's like when now would we work right that we work office is supposedly going to we work is supposedly going to let go of half the employee base across the world right because their founder the adam newman dude completely ran the company to the ground took out loads of loans against the company um way overestimated its value to the market um, so much so that the IPO was stalled, was I think it's on pause now. They were meant to go for a big IPO, but they didn't um, decide against it. And now he effectively got fired and then got given a bunch of money to get fired, even though he didn't run the company well, right? So usually the founders of companies either get away with it scot-free or they serve some time in prison, right? That's two of the same paths. But for the people that are employed, for the people that are using the service um, or are relying on them as a source of income, they're the ones that have to pick up the pieces. So I get it. But I think in the the way it was presented and the way he positioned himself next to Billy McFarlane as the kind of de facto go-to guy, if it would have been a success, he would have been front and center saying how important he was for the success. And now that it's a failure, he's properly trying to distance himself from it. He wants nothing to do with it. When he was the person that was having his top off, drinking a beer in the middle of the beach, ordering around um, uh, models and trying to look like he was important and he had decision-making um, uh, privileges, and now that it's gone tits up, he doesn't want anything to do with it. And I think the fact that he made no, again, I don't know the details, maybe he has it in the background, but it looks like he made no real effort to try and correct the wrongs of this issue. He didn't reach out to that um, chef that was um, highlighted in the Netflix documentary, the Caribbean lady who essentially took out a loan or used her savings to buy all the stock and hire people because she thought the fire festival was going to blow. Then it didn't happen and she still had to pay everyone out because she promised them the money. Right? He didn't make any effort to try and correct that and try and fix that issue. He's, you know, he's got money. He's obviously, no count, pure pockets. We don't know if he's got money or not, but he should have been able, he should have made a public effort to try and correct these wrongs, just own up to it and say, "Hey, I played a part in it, but I also want to let you guys know that I was also frauded, and, and and you know, I was also frauded, and kind of hoodwinked into this Billy McFarlane, kind of, and you know, um, convinced me otherwise." Sorry, Billy McFarlane basically duped me too, but I'm going to try and correct this and make things right for the people that I can. Anyone else? You direct them to the law. Direct them to the courts. Cool, but he made no effort to do that. He really was acting a little bit like above it like how he is now like laughing that he's his wife gets called the fraud gets called a fraudster too that seems really terrible right the wife had never had to do with this and now suddenly he's you know everything that he does now every every post he puts on social media it will have people saying he frauded people in these comments like his public perception and his public stock and value has decreased and that's the main reason why he'd want to start an app that's the main reason why investment companies want to back him because they want to leverage his fame so if his fame is being completely tarnished on social and again people have their their people have their stances that they occupy and it seems as if Ja Rule's not really looked at in the most, you know, in the best of light. So I don't really know why he'd be putting himself front and center with Logic another app. People don't want to hear from you. They, they still think that you're involved in this, even if the courts don't. So again, I don't know. I don't know. Let's hear what you say. And now I'm attached to it. Influencer marketing for, for me is like the gift and the curse because it can be a great thing. It can be used as a great tool. Influencers, you know, they really 
can get the word out there to millions and millions of people and, and build the excitement around your project too. But it can also create a, a sense of, I'll give you an example like of, of a great a, a movie. Everybody comes home and like, yo, the movie's so good, you gotta see it, it's the best movie. And then your expectations for the movie are so high that it's like, no, right, how do I actually meet this? Under, sell, over deliver. You know, let people feel like, oh, it's gonna be okay. And then get there and be like, wow, it was out of this world. Versus, it's gonna be out of this world. And then they're like, it was okay. <laughs> Yeah, but you can't really I say that because Fire Festival didn't even get to be operational. It wasn't even, it didn't, it's not that it didn't meet its standards. They completely hoodwinked and, you know, they completely sold, they sold something that didn't exist. They didn't have a festival, right? You watch a documentary and you saw that they were planning a festival, I don't know, a month or two months out. They didn't have any plumbing. They hadn't sorted out all the tents. The, uh, the, the, the catering was non-existent. They had to move islands. Because of uh, Billy Billy McFarland's um, um, insistence to to kind of uh, put the fact that the island was formerly owned by Pablo Escobar and the copy over it maybe or El Chapo whatever it was and the the the, the person that la that owned it said you know explicitly told him not to use that name in the copy and they did it and then he got chucked off the island like they 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 essentially messed it up for themselves they they didn't deliver the product at all it was not like some festivals we have in London where. You know, we're over inundated with festivals in London. There's too many in the, in the UK, by and large. We're the kind of kings of festivals and the rest of Europe, right? There's so many festivals out there that you, there's, not enough there's not enough lifetimes you can live to go to all the festivals in the world, right? Not, not going to happen, especially in Europe. But some of them are not successful because of poor execution, um, maybe poor infrastructure. Uh, they didn't staff the festival too well. Usually, you know, the bar and the entries and all that sort of stuff really makes... A festival go down the tanker and sometimes the sound is a big deal but you know you have to you have to deliver it first and then i can make my mind up they didn't even get to attend the festival people got there and were given styrofoam containers with a bit of bread and cheese on it that isn't a festival that's you telling me to that's you that's 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 essentially what the fraud case was about isn't it like they were sold one thing and then when they got there it wasn't what they were sold so again this guy is completely completely deluded if he, if he thinks that the reason why it didn't go successful or even influence the marketing is bad because you over promote something that's not the reason it's because most of the stuff that influences promote is a bit crappy right it reminds you of those things that you would have seen um marketed or advertised on those kind of um 24-hour sales program things like qbc right a lot of the influencer pro pro products are sort of like the stuff you see on qbc right really crappy um chains and you know supplements and uh, waist trainers and stuff that isn't that great that aren't that great um braless things you know the little suction cups that amber rose was, was was promoting they don't really work that well so they promote them and they're quite crappy right for the most part but if, a, if an influencer is able to promote something that's really of value that they can kind of get behind and that kind of aligns with their own uh lifestyle and what interests that they have it can completely blow up like look at look at look at some of the fashion brands out there right they're able to kind of tap into actual style or stylist or public figures or you know street style stars give them some products and it kind of works really well especially if it links up well with their kind of overall image the moment it doesn't it's the moment it flops i'm sure some of the emma chamberlain fans when they saw emma chamberlain getting photographed or being flown out by vogue and wearing dior and gucci it didn't really make any sense right because emma chamberlain is sort of like you're this norm core quirky white girl who's i don't know under the age of 21 and you know some yes she's a successful youtuber now but some of the girls that follow her aren't that you know don't have the 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 means to afford maybe buying a, a dress from gucci or whatever it may be so that way it doesn't make any sense but to assume that fire festival didn't work because you oversold it is ridiculous man you didn't even deliver anything you can't oversell something you don't deliver on back to launch icon after fire because everyone was like ja why don't you just wait till all the lawsuits are done and wait and, and, and my answer to that was okay so these lawsuits could take two three years which they did <laughs> and, you know and i'm like so i'm supposed to wait until those are over to yes try to rebuild yes yes you mug like i don't know what's wrong with this guy Look, man, the public sentiment around Ja Rule started going down the tanker when David Chappelle done that, you know, done that comedy skit or done that, that line about, you know, I don't care about what Ja Rule thinks, right? That's when he's 
stock went down when people started to realize that when this guy wasn't rapping he actually had to speak outside of you know making good tunes and and you know crooning on the hook is when you saw that you know he was not the sharpest knife in the in the drawer cool that's okay no one wants you to be elon musk right that's fine but in the world that he's existing being an influencer being a public figure being somebody of notoriety being a hip-hop legend he has to realize that the reason why startups are even giving him the time of day and opening their doors to him is because he has value in the market right he has stock he has currency in being a celebrity in being somebody people are familiar with right so that when this brand aligns itself with this guy they can use him to leverage his influence and celebrity to get the word out and get awareness and obviously hopefully drive the um, acquisition user sign up sales whatever it may be but the moment that that stock that value dips right for instance like big brands aren't going to go and sign up a d-list or Z list a celebrity because they don't have the necessary currency they need to reach people that they want to reach they're going to go to the top so if your stock starts to fall then it makes sense that you have to be very careful about how you conduct yourself in public because you don't want your perception or the idea of you to get further damaged by the things that you do or say that's the life of a public ce- of a celebrity or somebody in the public eye right you kind of have to not care about what people think and you also have to care about what people think because essentially they're the ones that are giving you the platform and providing you the means and the ability in order to kind of live that lifestyle. So th- this idea that you should maybe sit back and allow the documentary to film and not do tweet nonsense and not put himself out and not kind of distance himself publicly from himself and let the courts go through the process because again the courts are going to be um are going to be completely subjective in this right they're going to look at the evidence analyze everything and come to a decision if they can come to a decision without caring who you are and and ascertain that you were not involved it's a win then you can come out and do the entire rollout go on oprah sit down with the guys at the, or the girls at the view and really speak openly lay your heart out be very remorseful about what happened and understanding the pain people went through and say that behind the scenes that you helped this person out you did what you can do here and there but you don't have the funds to be able to support everybody you hope you can but you're hoping with this new platform that you're launching see q there that's when you launch your new hoping this new platform that you launch is going to give people the opportunity to see what i was trying to do and i hope that people are able to support it and see what they can because we're going to try and push another narrative of what influencers should be that's how the rollout could be but to somehow allow the courts to run their case now at the moment to ascertain whether or not you are fraud or not to make sure whether or not you haven't scammed people out of their money and ruined their lives forever you're going to also promote your brand that is insane. That's what you show he's super delusional. He has no idea what he's talking about. And again, it goes to show, more likely than not, he's other this other thing will also flop. It's simple because if 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 it's, if it's relying solely on him being this person in front of the camera, um, is is it if it relies solely on him pushing it forward and being the person that's bringing the brand awareness to it, the moment people see him and see Icon, they're just gonna remember the Fire Festival. They're not gonna give it any sort of a chance. And that's the thing that he's really not understanding. He essentially ruined the entire rollout of this issue because now the main thing that's been thrown out, I only rep- remember the icon because I remember him talking about it in the Breakfast Club. Most people are only going to click the news of Jaro because they've heard he got acquitted of all charges from the Fire Festival. They're not going to give a Scooby Doo about the new icon thing. They're not going to care. Build and rebrand my company. I said it take. It's going to take me a year to build the platform. More anyway. than a year. My second thought process. More than a year to rebrand it and too. But you can't do it concurrently. Like it makes absolutely no sense. When when people are invest when when um Neil deGrasse Tyson was going through what he was going through in terms of you know his sexual assault case right or um you know unwanted sexual advances to that lady um he was very forthright and said I'm going to you know allow the the process to go through the procedure and you know what he did he took a back seat now fair enough sometimes those big public celebrities especially the ones that are signed to William Morris and stuff those people are very those agents and those kind of you know um entertainment people are very aware and very um. They're very plugged into what's going on and they know how to conduct their clients. So they'll probably tell you to like, you know, stay off the TV, don't be on social and just kind of keep yourself quiet until the case is kind of run through, which allows people to kind of forget that you were involved in it. And also once the once the story comes out that you are acquitted of all charges, then you can start ramping up and going on appearances and talking. Same with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Remember he got acquitted or got found not guilty of all those charges? That's when you saw him on Joe Rogan, Sam Harris, going on Russell Brand because the charges dropped and he could then go and promote his book again. But to say that you can somehow promote your new app and also have this looming case behind you is nuts because what? Because in, even in investment terms, most um, VCs are going to be wary about investing in you 
whilst the case is running anyway. They're going to say, look, I'm going to hold off and let, let the case run its course. And then once it does, get back to me. But even then, your, your name might have already been muddied. So this guy, I don't, again, this guy is insanely dumb. Really is. I hate to say it, but this is insane. If, it, if he's able to succeed in spite of this, then kudos to him, right? I'll give him his all his dues. But it doesn't look like he's giving himself any chance to win. Like, honestly. Even this, even this interview is, is essentially mostly uh, propagated under the guise of him explaining or explaining his side about the whole fire festival thing. It's not really about anything else about Icon. One. Me sitting home and watching someone else create and do this idea and watch it go. No one's created and, it. And I'm Cause it's a poison chalice. Sitting there like that was mine and my idea. I had it built, everything, and now someone else is getting rich off of my hard work. You know? And so I seen other companies start to sprout up, starting to try to, you know, steal the business model a little bit. And and so I, you know, I, I jumped right back on the horse rebuild, rebrand, and here we are with Icon. And for me, Icon is 10 times the platform that I, if I would ever buy it. You know, so. Anyway, he's, he's deluded. I guess, I, again, hopefully it succeeds for him. You know, it's cool to see another black man doing his thing, blah, 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 that common trope. But for the most part, in truth, this guy has absolutely gave himself no chance to win. He's made a rod for his own back, um, especially in this area where everyone has an opinion, i.e. me. Um, everyone wants to kind of see somebody at loss lose again really in a bigger major way some people are quite vengeful too so the fact that he was acquitted of all charges concerning the fire festival it might put a battery in some people's backs to make sure he gets charged for this other thing and he gets found guilty of some other thing or that they make sure that this fact this thing fails so again he's really messed up his chances of succeeding with his app and you know it's just really asinine because it's such an easy thing to do to correct wait until the court proceedings have, uh, have all finished don't make any noise or, or announcements. Keep yourself quiet. Stay under under the radar. Don't go in the breakfast club and start laughing and joking about the whole situation where people all around the world or somewhere um, in the Caribbean are suffering still and haven't got any money back for whatever they've gone through. It's just bad optics. And then suddenly sit down here with Forbes and kind of cry this woe is me. My wife is being accused of being a fraudster too because of this crazy story. It's not a crazy story. You are front and center of this documentary. You were there right next to Billy McFarlane wanting to be the de facto celebrity endorsement guy. The moment it went tits up, you kind of distanced yourself naturally. But now you also distance yourself from the, from the responsibility of looking after the people that were wronged, of trying to correct the narrative, of trying to clear your name. Instead, he's it's just, he's bemused what anyone would think that he's a fraudster. We don't know you though. Why, why, why would we not assume that you could be a fraudster we don't know you personally it's an it's an insane it's an insane way to go about things but again it also is nothing short of what is to be expected in startup world most startup founders are like this so you probably learned something from billy mcfarlane they're just crappy people um they don't really have good ethics or morals right maybe because the fact that it's quite un it's unregulated and essentially you can start up your own startup in you know underneath your duvet wearing your boxes um, you, you essentially can kind of write, rewrite and write, write and rewrite the culture of your company, you know, week in, week out, day in, day out. You can be involved in every kind of meeting. You can structure the company so that you have the de facto power and autonomy and decision making process. Um, it just kind of encourages really bad behavior. So I'm not surprised that he thinks that he's in a clear and he's done nothing wrong because, you know, in startups, no one does anything wrong. I'm sure Adam Newman, the, the WeWork dude, will come around and be like, hey, it wasn't my fault. You know, every, no one does anything wrong. No one owns up to their mistake. They all ride off to the sunset with their payouts and leave a whole trail of um, destroyed and dismantled lives because the other people weren't none the wiser what was going on at the top. But again, who knows? Maybe he might succeed, he might not. But for me, I think he's absolutely um, messed himself up really in that regard. But, you know, what, what do I know?